Hi, my name's Kim Arnold. Welcome to my YouTube channel for a scrapbooking process video using Uniquely Creative Roots and Wings collection. This is the first layout I did from this collection, which I don't have a process video for. You know, I used one of the pattern papers from the pattern paper pack, die cuts, and I fussy cut some items as well from one of the pattern papers. I'll put some close-ups and pictures of that layout at the end of this video, along with the um, photos of this layout. So the first layout was a very girly layout. I am going to do a layout with photos of my son um, asleep in the car for this layout. It's also going to have um, a mixed media background. So I'm using Vicky Booten's Foundations paper for this because I really like this paper and its weight and how it handles mixed media. But because I am intending to put a lot of water on this, I have actually added a clear gesso background behind the area where I ten, intend to put the mixed media work, which is essentially going to be an elongated triangle from the top of the page down through the middle of the page. Um, while that gesso dries, I am going to fussy cut out um, the blue and grey florals from one of the pattern papers, the cut apart pattern papers. Now I'm the gesso is dry, I'm going to start work on this mixed media background. Now I am using a Lindy's Magical Shaker um, diluted with water. So it's a powder that you add water to. The one that I am using is called Afternoon Delight Denim. So it has a little bit of a purpley and green tint to it. But because I didn't want it to be um, too bright, I actually added a couple of drops of a Distress Oxide re into that and then mixed it up. So what I'm doing is using quite a lot of water and I am um, working with that diluted um, Lindy's Magical Shaker solution and I'm building a triangle with drips um, with that watercolour solution. Um, so you can see I put the photos up from time to time to check the sizing. I use um, splatters off the paintbrush as well to break up the edges and I am encouraging some drips down um, from the triangle so that it's not a regular triangle shape. Um, I'm also checking the colour to some of the items from the die cuts that I'm going to use. Now you see here I've added quite a lot of the straight Distress Oxide, so I'm using Hickory Smoke. That's the same one that I added to the Lindy's Magical. I decided I put too much on, so I dabbed it off with a paper towel, and now I'm just reapplying the Lindy's um, Magical Solution, Magical Shaker Powder again. That that watercolour and then I've come back with just a much smaller amount of the Distress Oxide. So again, that was Hickory Smoke um, in three spots. So um, again, to keep that visual sort of movement around the layout, I've just put three small areas of that um, Hickory Smoke Oxide, which when it dries will be just give a really nice smoky look in those sections. Now I'm going to add a touch of another powder, which I add a tiny bit of water to. And these are Pearl X powdered pigments, and they are the most beautiful metallic pigments. And I am using Super Bronze on this, and you need the tiniest amount. So I just use a little tiny spoon. So a tiny, tiny amount with a bit of water to it. And then I'm dabbing it into the Distress Oxide section. So then it's going to have that bronze. It's like, um, it sort of ends up looking like metallic particles speckled through rock. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, and I've done a few little splatters with that metallic powder as well. Um, so as this dries, I work a bit more of the, um, the magical powder mix in. Um, just trying to avoid moving into those distress oxide areas because I don't want to smudge that because I am really happy. When a brush doesn't work, always feel free to use your fingers um, to get the shape and the look that you want. You can get a lot softer effect by um, dabbing your fingers. So now I've just set that aside to dry. And while that dries, I am going to cut out the title from the die cut that comes with this um, Roots and Wings range. Um, so 
I only want to use the U from, from this title, but I'm going to keep the other bits and I'll use them on a later it's a layout at some later date. And the way this die works is that you get a frame of the word um, as well as the inside of the word. So I'm not going to use the inside of the word on this layout. I'm going to use the frame of the word. And I'm going to cut four of these at this stage. And I am not very good at die cutting, I have to say. But anyway, I worked it out. I ended up needing to add a little shim of cardstock to help push this down. But um, I've, I end up, I cut four of these. Now, once I let my background air dry, I actually run it through my mink, which is a 12 inch laminator, which helps flatten out the background because it can dry a bit lumpy, even with a really intense um, and heavyweight paper, which I have used, you can still get some buckling and the mink fixes that. Of course, I decided then that I really needed five titles, five U's. So I cut myself another one, which I'm just doing here. Um, you do need to make sure that your background's completely dry before you run it through a laminator or mink. Um, and I like to use a piece of spare cardstock on top of it. So if any of the mixed media sort of melts or, or, or shifts, it's not onto my sleeve. It's just onto a, um, onto a spare piece of cardstock. Um, so I'm just popping out that last title. So now I have five outlines of the U from that die cut, which is what I'm going to use um, to do most of my title with. So I put that die cutting machine away and you can see that I'm just going to run them down on that um, mixed media background underneath the photo. Now, uh, while I was waiting for things to dry too, I decided that my photo really needed to be black and white. So I actually... Um, reprinted those photos in black and white. I use a Canon selfie um, and I find it great for just being able to print photos on demand at home. If I'm doing really big lots of printing, I will go to a photo printing place um, and print photos. But otherwise I, yeah, I print my photos at home with my selfie. Now I'm backing these photos with some tissue paper, um, which <laughs> the bit that I'm using at the moment is actually out of a a gift that I was sent um, and so you can buy tissue paper it's, it is just gift wrapping tissue paper and I just use that to create a soft layer behind the photos um, another thing I often do is actually sand the edges of the photos so that I've got a, a distressed white edge around them um, but this time I am using the tissue paper so you can see the black and white photos work really well on with this layout because again the flowers that I'm using with it are really soft greys and blues so it's really suit black and white photos. I'm just putting some card um, some chipboard off cuts behind the photos to pop them up a little bit and I now am playing with some of the um, flowers that I have fussy cut and the die cuts so I'm just layering those up um, on the sides of the photos. Um, I'm cutting cutting some bits bits apart and layering up those beautiful blue roses and the gray die cuts. Um, I also cut out some white roses from that same um, cut apart sheet and I have just cut that one section into half and used half on each side of the photo gather and then I've put a small blue rose down in the in the title flow. Um, Yep, just some more fussy cut bits. As you can see, I'm very much sticking towards this blue, gray, white type color palette for this particular layout. Um, and I've just stuck a little label in there, which I'll add some journaling onto. Um, and I am pretty happy with how things have come together. Um, once the mixed media background was done, it came together super duper fast. Um, so now I'm just cutting some sewing thread and I'm just going to put, um, some bunched up bits of sewing thread in layered underneath the flower some of the flowers so on each side of the photos and down with the little rose that's in the in the title it just creates yet more texture and interest um so yeah i i, I like the effect the other thing i do um, from time to time is use medical gauze um and you can just stress that and that gives a similar effect to like the sewing threads. Um, so I like to do that as well, but on this layout I've chosen to use some sewing thread. So now I'm just sticking everything down. Um, I leave the clusters of flowers where they are and try to try to work 
um, with them while they're in place so that I don't have to try and rebuild the cluster once I'm happy with it. So photos, first photos going down. Sticking the first of the titles. I did actually damage this one when I die cut it. So I'm going to stick the damage bit up underneath the photos and that works perfectly. Um, and now I'll go on and stick down the cluster that's on the other side. Or am I going to stick down the titles? I'm using my T-square ruler there to make sure everything's nice and straight. Um, some elements you want crooked, like in this instance, I've got my photos crooked, but other other elements I like to have completely straight. And in this case, I want the um, title, the U's in the title to be very straight. I am actually putting little bits of chipboard too under some of these um, die cut or fussy cut flowers just to pop, pop them up and create some layers. So you can see I've popped little bits in um, and I just use my favorite glue which I use all the time um, and that one is I'm just grabbing it out of my bag the art glitter glue um, it dries completely clear so if you end up smudging it onto your layer it will dry clear um, and particularly when you're sticking down these die cuts which are very very fine it's hard to get not end up with glue sort of getting outside the die cut um, so yeah, I use the art glitter glue. I find it's quite strong. If I am um, sticking down bigger flowers, I will go for a heftier, stronger grabbing glue. Um, and I like to use the Stamperia extra strong glue. Um, and I find that this art glitter glue works really well with the chipboard that I put behind stuff to, to pop it up. So, I mean, you can use foam tape. Um, I just mix between foam tape, chipboard, and I have actually recently got some craft foam sheets, which I'm also going to try. Um, just looking for options. Um, if you use too much of the off cuts of chipboard, it can get really heavy on a layout. So in that case, um, build it with some foam tape. I'm just tossing up now because I moved where the titles, where the U's were sitting, um, the flower didn't look right in the spot that I'd had it before. So I've actually moved it up and put it a little bit further up on the left hand side of the, um, of the U titles. So I'm just building that third little cluster of flowers there at the moment with some chipboard holding it in place just so that it grabs because of course there's threads under that um, and wet glue definitely helps with making sure that you hold elements in place when you've got threads or gauze involved. I'm just doing some journaling. Yeah, I did notice that once I journaled some of it wasn't perfectly straight. This is where it's a bonus if you draw some lines first. Um, but I'm putting my journaling in. I, I, it is really important to journal. At least put your date and the names of the people involved um, in the photos on every layout because you know in future generations they want to know what's going on. I'm trimming off the top of that foundations paper. And I will say that um, foundations paper has a right and a wrong side. So by leaving that little strip at the top, you can actually feel um, along the little um, line that's at the top so you could actually um, pull the strip off but I like to cut it off so it goes straight you can actually tell which is the right and wrong side otherwise it can be really hard to tell um, which is the right and wrong side so it'll feel rough on the wrong side along that um, dotted line and it will feel smooth on the right side I'm adding some liquid pearls on now um, which just gives another little bit of interest um, so that's using the Nuvo Liquid Pearls. Um, uh, they're a beautiful product. Really, really, really like it. So just adding some of those around the flower clusters. And now you are going to see some still photos and some close-ups of this layout. Um, I'm really happy with how this came together. And I think the mixed media background on this worked out really well. Um, I really, really love it. It's a soft layout. You could use it for male or female layout. I've also included some images of the first layout from the uniquely creative Roots and Wings collection that I made. These layouts were made for Embellish It, my local scrapbooking shop in Timaru, New Zealand, also available online. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like and if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.